All right, so this call is now being recorded. So, dia lagi dua limit, okay? The dua limit exists, and dua limit ni the approach at the same value lah. So one of a few laws I should know is limit x approaches t square root of contohnya a is equal to square root of limit. Sorry. Square root of limit x approaches t a. Okay, and then I believe second after this. So, um, kita apa yang kita perlu buat dulu? Terus kita masukkan limit lah, ikut limit law ni. Masukkan limit dalam square root. So, jadi limit x approaches t tiga h of x tolak limit. Ia berapa? Saya buat satu satu je. 3hx tolak 2kx Ah begini, okey Lepas tu guna strategi law Untuk yang operasi tambah tolak ni Boleh kembangkan limit dia Akan jadi, oh hey Chai so, Kita orang baru nak boleh ya, kan? ha, Tapi saya rakam Alright so ini baru soal pertama So dari saya ni Chai, tak lepas apa-apa eh Okey So how are you Chai? Boleh teruskan? Bawa nak? Bawa nak boleh sebenarnya? Boleh, boleh teruskan. Okay, so tadi kita atau saya lah, saya kata tadi berkendak dengan one of the laws which is uh, for a square root, you can just expand the limit into the square root like this and then use another law for operation plus or minus, you can expand the limit as well. So you will get limit as x approaches t, 3 h of x, tolak limit x approach, oh sorry, x approaches t, 2 k of x, square root sign, sign. So, another law adalah constant. Okay, kalau tiga tu adalah constant, so kita boleh buat keluar lah constant tu. Okay, so akan jadi tiga limit x approaches t h of x sama juga macam dua ni constant juga boleh buat keluar x approaches t k of x square so sekarang ni kita ada maklumat berkenaan dengan limit x approaches t untuk fungsi h dengan fungsi k yang ni lah atas ni tak nampak lah ya apa ya alam yang korang nampak eh so untuk x approaches t ada lambat for function h while for function k x approaches t is negative 2. So all you have to do is just sub in the values given. You will get supposed to be um, 3 times 4 and then 2 times with negative 2. So 12 tambah 16 jadi eh, sorry 12 tambah 4 jadi 16 Ingat untuk square root, untuk nombor ni akan jadi uh, berpat. Okay. Hal ni tak ada masalah setakat ni. So, so far, boleh. So, jawapan ni adalah dadu. Berpat. Alright. Okay, so kalau tak ada soalan boleh teruskan ni. Eh? Nanti yang file ni, yang saya buat dan kira nanti saya hantar dalam group asal eh. So yang seterusnya adalah ha. So sekarang ni kita jumpa dengan quadratic function atau polynomial ni then first things first. Okay, so kalau lah the approach from the right macam ni, approach from the right. As far as I know, um function ni dia tak ada yang precise function tu. Yang kita tengok dia punya restricted domain from the left to the right. Uh, so tapi kalau lah kita substitute negative 1 terus akan dapat bukan define intermediate form okay intermediate form intermediate form ni adalah yang kosong bagi kosong so kalau lah kita dapat bentuk gini maksudnya salah lah cara kita nak selesaikan so first apa yang kita perlu buat okay first kita perlu tentukan dulu boleh tak kita faktorkan can we factorize this rational function for the numerator and denominator if we can then proceed with the factorization method lah. So, 
pertama kita tulis balik limit x approaches negative 1 from the right we know that x square minus 1 can be factorized to become x minus 1 and x plus 1 divided by all right um siapa Hulaifa ni kawan saya oh uh, yeah okay so saya tak Hulaifa um nama saya Abi saya ialah alumni KMK, Kedah, Kedah. Okay, sekarang ni saya dah belajar UM, ambil class mat. Salam. So, sekarang ni kita sedang bincang bab lapan lah. Dan so far, kita baru bincang satu soalan. Okay. Dan uh, ni dah jangka kira dia. So, okay. Uh, rumusan untuk bab ni ya. Eh. Bukan rumusan bab ni. Rumusan untuk soalan yang saya buat tadi adalah limit loss. Okay. Wujud balik limit loss. And then apply pun soalan ni. Okay. Tengok yang kalau ada constant, kita buat keluar bagi limit tu. Ada square root tu, kita boleh kembangkan dan soalan lah. Okay. But don't worry. Kalau lah Zaifah berminat nak file ni, boleh lah nanti saya add dalam group HR nanti saya bagi admin lah. Ataupun nak add dia dalam group, boleh. Alright, so sekarang ni soalan sekarang kita bincangkan berkenaan dengan uh, kalau lah kita direct substitute negative 1 into our function here then we will have intermediate form which is 0 divided by 0 okay so this is not the answer that we want unless we have no choice then we could proceed lah but here we can factorize this function uh, on the numerator and the denominator we can factorize it so for the numerator which is x squared minus 1 we factorize it to become x minus 1 and x plus 1 how about the denominator apa jadi kalau di denominator tu, saya factorize juga. So, kalau kau nak guna calculator boleh, tak ada masalah. So, harap ni saya assume eh, semua pandai calculator untuk pemfaktoran. So, sepatutnya akan dapat uh, x plus 1 dengan x plus 4. So, right now, x plus 1, okay. So, from here, kita boleh simplify. Our numerator dengan denominator should be It should be like this lah As limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right x minus 1 over x plus 4 From here, we could direct substitute Okay, we could direct substitute Don't need to worry about the approach to the right Unless If we are dealing with a piecewise function Or an absolute function, okay if we are dealing with those kinds of functions, then we have to consider the approaching from the left and approaching from the right. But for this question, we don't need to consider, okay? This is just a straightforward question, but it's just testing us on how do we solve questions where if we direct substitute in the first place, can you give example for those? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I have one. Uh, wait, eh? I have one. So last week or two weeks ago, I think, um, I discussed that kind of question with these two people here. So, but let me show you, Ahmed. So, wait, let me find Max Tutor. Uh, I think this is this, this one, okay? Wait, I think this is this one. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I think, no, this is the first chapter, sorry. I think this is the one. Ah, yes. So, uh, oh, yeah, this is the question, I think. Yeah, yeah. So from here, uh, wait, this is for differentiability, sorry. It's differentiable at x. Yeah. Eh, hey. it is on differentiability. Ah, tapi, uh, soalan differentiability pun nak kita tentukan differentiability, contoh macam untuk uh, modulus function macam ni, uh, baru lah kita tengok dia punya restricted domain, which is this one lah. This is our restricted domain. And then if we take the limit, for example, x approaches 2 from the right, <coughs> x approaches 2 from the right, then we would consider this function in our piecewise function. But how about x approaches 2 from the left, which is limit as x approaches 2 from the left, then we consider this function, okay? So that is well, a few of examples. Uh, if we are dealing with piecewise functions, then we consider it. But unlike the question that we've seen before, it doesn't consider it uh, because it's just a straightforward question. 
a rational function, nothing to worry about, no restrict domains, whatever, then we could solve it as usual. No problem from there. Okay. Uh, I think maybe we could see it, but later on I'll check it out. And maybe after this, I might give a few more exercises for limits. All right. Hopefully, you guys are ready for it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's continue on. So from here, uh, limit as x approaches negative one. Oh, by the way, out of topic, but before you determine its differentiability, you have to determine whether it is continuous or not for the, uh, for the limit. If it is, then you can consider it. Like you can determine its differentiability. But if it's not continuous, then automatically we can say, okay, it is not differentiable. differentiable. All right? So that's a bit from me. Uh, okay, let, let's move on. So <clears throat> x minus 1 divided by x plus 4. Now from here, we can direct sub into our function here. So we will get negative 1 minus 1 over negative 1 plus 4. Then it should be negative 2 over 3. And that should be our answer for b. All right? So honestly, right, I have um, notes regarding on how to, how do we plan? <laughs> how do we plan our, wait, let me find it. You give me two seconds, not two seconds, I mean two minutes, because I have the notes, which it show us a, um, a flow chart on how we try to find limits when it's undefined, when it's um, intermediate form and so on. So give me, give me, Few minutes to find it. I think I have it, but I'm not sure where I put it. And it's very useful if you want to find the limits. Where? Where is it? Limit, limit. Oh no, no, limit. Oh, not this one, not this one. Mm. Mm. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, so let me share my screen. All right, give me a second. So let me show it uh, a window. Please, yeah. Uh, my photo. All right. So this is how you calculate limit. Okay. Um, credit to Han Academy for providing me this note. So first, we direct substitute. All right. We we'll try to find the function first by that substitution. So we have three different um, forms. First is asymptote, second is the limit, all right? And then third is the in, in, indeterminate form. Now, if we got the indeterminate form, then we have a few ways to evaluate. First, for, for our syllabus, for metrics, we have the conjugate and the factoring, okay? So you find the conjugate, then you solve it, or you factor it, then you simplify it, and then you solve it. Okay, but for these three identities, um, just ignore it for now. It's not in your syllabus. But yeah, these two, factoring and conjugates, are apart from your syllabus. Okay, then you can try to evaluate again, see whether or not you will get the limit or you will get your asymptote. Okay, so I'll be sharing this um, later on after class in the group. All right, so hopefully you will have a, a really good idea on how do you plan ahead to solve limits. Okay. So let me share my screen again. All right. Yeah. Give me a second. So let me stop sharing. Yes, I did stop. I did stop sharing. Yes, stop sharing. All right. So let's move on to the next question. All right, here. Now, honestly, right. I don't want you guys to memorize on the limits. I want you guys to understand what you're doing. So given we have an exponential function here, I think. Yes. 2 to the power of negative x divided by 2 to the power of x. So first things first, um, try to use the index laws. OK, since we have a similar base, which is 2 and 2, so we could use the index law, which is um, a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. As long as your bases are the same, then you could conduct this index law, which is a to the power of m minus n. All right. So limit as x approaches infinity 
2 to the power of negative x over 2 to the power of x. Now, by conducting the law, we will get limit as x approaches infinity, 2 to the power of negative x minus x. Now, if we simplify this, we should get 1 over <clears throat> 4 to the power of x. Okay, negative x minus x, we should get negative 2x. And then if you want to make it as 4 to the power of x or, wait, sorry, 1 over 4 to the power of x or 1 over 2 to the power of 2x, then it is okay. Because right now we are trying to compute the limit. So, <clears throat> if we direct substitute, I mean, about the working, I think you don't need to show that you direct substitute infinity because infinity is not a number, it's just a concept where we are trying to say when x becomes bigger, then what will be the output? Right. So let's 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 get a few examples, right? So let's say x is approaching to infinity, which means a bigger number. Let's say one thousand, no one hundred. So when we direct substitute the value at our on our denominator here, one one to the power of four, eh, one over four to the power of one hundred, then you will see that the value or this whole value here will become very, very small, right? Because as the denominator value increases, then the whole value itself will become closer to zero, right? Okay, so if you try with other bigger numbers, such as 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, then you can see that the value is approaching zero. That is approaching zero because the denominator is increasing as it is. Since our x is approaching infinity, means that we are approaching to a bigger number. That since it is approaching to a bigger number at the denominator, then the number becomes extremely small, meaning that it will eventually approximately becomes zero. Okay, it becomes zero. But what happens for four to the power of x, for x approaching infinity? Uh, for this, Obviously, uh, well, when the number big when, when x is approaching to a bigger number, then this limit will become bigger, uh, meaning that this will become infinity. All right? So this is how you compute limits without graphing. Okay, but if you know how to graph one over four to the power of x, then go ahead. It is really nice, it is safer. But for me, I rather understood what I am doing with limits. So here you go. When you are approaching to a bigger number, then your de denominator becomes bigger. Therefore, your whole, um, the whole limit will become much more closer to zero. Okay. <clears throat> All right, hopefully you will understand. But uh, yeah, hopefully you understand. Inshallah. Okay. <clears throat> so um, what else? I think that's about it. That is B. You will get for answer B. All right. <clears throat> okay, so any, any questions so far for question three? If none, then we can proceed with the next question. We have about like seven more, right? Ah, nice. Okay, but if you are still um, not confident, then use your calculator lah. by resubstitute the, big, the bigger values and then see the output, okay? And then compare to your hypothesis. Ah, here we go. So we have a piecewise function. Now, okay, so it is trying to ask which of the following statements are true. Okay. So, first, okay, number one, Roman, we have, okay, does limit x approaches one f of x exists? Now, if you are trying to find the limit, okay, if you are trying to find the limit, then ignore this part down here first. When is at x is equal to one? We will be focusing on this part here. Right, sorry if the background noise is really loud. There, there is a performance going on, right? My condolences. Okay, so if you want to determine the limit, then we ignore first the value at x is equal to one. Okay, we we only focus on x squared minus one, right? So, if you want to determine whether it exists or not. We have to find the limit 
that is approaching from the right and approach from the left. If both of them are equal, they exist, huh? the overall limit. But if either one of them or both of them, well, obviously, either one of them, well, if both of them aren't the same value, therefore, the limit doesn't exist. If the limit doesn't exist, then it's not continuous. All right? So, right now, let's compute first. X approaches one from the right. X squared minus five. So, like I said, for this function here, you don't have to worry about uh, approaching from the because here, x is not equal to one. It's basically it tells you that it this function here is x bigger than zero, or x is less than zero. Okay, so it basically means that x plus minus one, if it approaches from the right, we still use the function x squared minus one. If it approaches x to, uh, from the left, it still uses the same function, which is x squared minus one. Okay, unless the function, the piecewise function that I showed you, for example, right? If they give you um, x squared minus one, where x is bigger equal to zero, x squared minus one, where x is less than zero, then this you consider. Okay, but for this x is not equal to 1, shows that this function x squared minus 1 it is for the domain x is bigger than 0 and x is less than 0, all right? So if we are trying to find the limit, x approaches 1 for the right, then we use the same function as x approaches from the left, okay? So let, let's just evaluate, okay? Let's just evaluate to just show our working. So 1 squared, minus one is equal to zero. Even though it looks easy, but sometimes students forgot to write down this working and therefore they will, they will lose marks that way. So my advice is that you write down every, everything that you know, okay? So limit as x approaches one from the left for x squared minus one, we use the same function based on the domain given, the restricted domain given, which is x is not equal to one. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. X is bigger than one, X is less than one. Okay, sorry. All right, I, I'm sorry, that was a, a, a mistake for me. Okay, so um, limit as X approaches one from the left, X square minus one. So just complete the limit as usual, which is zero. So we could create a conclusion. We can make a conclusion where limit as X approaches one from the right is equal to limit as x approaches one from the left f of x. What does this tell us? This tells us that limit x approaches one f of x exists. Yes, so um, the first statement is correct indeed, based on our calculation, okay? So how about number two? Well, it is defined where the, the domain given, the restricted domain for this first function is x is equal to one. Therefore, we could say, oh, at, at x is equal to one, f of one is equal to four. So this means that it is defined at x is equal to one, or it does exist, f of one. Therefore, the second statement is correct. But how about the third statement? So one of, uh, so the procedure to Determine whether it is continuous or not. First, you have to know, okay, does f of c exist at x is equal to c? Does it exist? And number two, does limit as x approaches c, f of x exists? And if both of these um, criteria is fulfilled, then is it continuous? Uh, so if you want to determine it, then we have to make sure that limit, the overall limit, which is x approaches c, f of x, is equal to f of c. Then if this is true, therefore, the function at point c is continuous. But as you can see, based on our calculations here, we know that the overall limit is 
for x approaches 1 is 0, but at f of 1, the value is 4. Is it the same? Of course not, obviously. So what is our conclusion? It is not continuous at x is equal to 1. So you have to write down those statements to show that you understood what you're doing. Therefore, this um, third statement is false. So the answer should be one and two. Uh, okay. So statement one and statement two are true, but not statement three. All right. So far, so good. Any questions to determine the continuity? Hopefully, they will not. Uh, yeah. Uh, is the young continuous to job? Oh, okay. Say you lemonade. Okay, so say what yang baru. All right, so okay, second term can the continuity. So, how do we determine its continuity? Okay. Let's say. At, okay, kita cerita tentang satu point, which is at x is equal to c. Okay. First, we have to know that f of c is defined or exists. Okay, first we have to know that first. All right, we have to see whether or not it is defined or exists. Exist. Okay, so how do we know that is it defined or exists? Okay, there are two ways that the function state that f of c exists or defined is if the domain is given x is bigger equal to c x is less than c if they have this inequality bigger than equal to or less than than equal to then that shows that f of c is defined or exists okay or another way to show it is x is equal to c lah. Okay, so there are two ways that could that they could present that f of c is defined or exist. Okay, as far as I know, lah. As far as I know, these are the two ways that they could show that is it is defined. All right. Okay, Rina, for the first part. Any questions for the first okay, part? Okay. Okay. All right. So how about the second uh, criteria? So the second criteria is the limit as x approaches c, f of x exists. Meaning that after we find the limit approach from the left and from the right, if it's the same, therefore the overall limit exists. Okay, so I want, so let me show you how to determine. Okay, so limit x approaches x approaches c from the right f of x is equal to limit as x approaches c from the left f of x okay so that's how we uh, def uh, define uh, that's how we try to determine the overall limit exist so finally if limit as x approaches c f of x equal to f of c therefore the limit in no at the, therefore at x is equal to c f is wait, at x is equal to c therefore at x equal to c it is Continuous. Okay. So as long as it fulfills all of these criteria or the rules that we have to follow to determine the continuity, then we could say it is continuous at x is equal to c. But if one of them is not fulfilled, then we can say that it is not continuous. All right. So any questions so far? Hopefully, you could understand how to determine the continuity at point C. All right. Okay, can we move on to the next question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Ah, the definition or the principle. The first principle, right. So, limit as h approaches zero, where x plus h to the power of three minus x to the power of three over h. Okay. So, from the back, obviously, this is the first principle. But how do we solve it now? If we directly substitute into this limit, then we will get the intermediate form. So first things first, you have to expand the binomial. Okay, this is the binomial. You have to expand it first to the power of three. So idea, you guys remember the binomial theorem. Okay, for uh, to, um, power of three. But if you don't, that is going to be very difficult because there is a formula for it, but it's just the simplified version from the binomial theorem. But if you know how to use the binomial theorem, which is using combinations, then it's going to be very easy to solve, no, to expand it. <laughs> All right, so how do we expand it? Okay, so um, okay, let me separate it from the limit. So x plus h to the power of three. So first, we start with, 3c3 x to the power of 3 i think let me recall yes and over here h is 0 and then you continue on 3c2 wait i think it's right, right? 3c0 let me recall hold up 3c0 ncr the n minus r hold on I want to uh, yeah. binomial binomial. Ah, right, here we go. And and zero. Ah, I see. Okay, so it starts with zero. All right, sorry guys. It's it starts with zero. And then okay, continue to one. So here is our value of n, and here is our n minus r. Okay, when three. Uh, wait, n minus. N minus R. Oh, sorry. This is N minus R. This is R. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. That should be the correct way. Yeah? Okay. Then you can carry on X to the power of 3 minus 1, H to the power of 1 plus 3C2, X, 3 minus 2, H. Mm, H is 2. And then finally, plus 3C3 x3 minus 3 h to the power 3. Okay, here's how you use the binomial theorem. Okay, you expand this binomial and then finally you could simplify it. So you should start with x to the power 3 plus 3 x to the power 2 h and then continues with 3 x h to the power 2 and then finally h to the power of 3. So this is, how, this is your expansion. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay, so if is there an easier way? No. Honestly, there is no <laughs> there is no such thing as easier way for expanding this unless you and will you Use binomial theorem, then it's okay, lah. Right, like it or not, you have to use binomial theorem, okay? All right, so let's move on. So I already compute the expansion for this binomial. So let me just rub it down. I need space. Okay, so I'll be skipping the step where I use the combination. I just expand it immediately. So limit as h approaches zero, x to the power of 3 plus 3 x square h plus 3 x h square plus h cube minus x square divided by h all right so from here we could uh, simplify the denominator x cube minus x cube and we are left with 3 x square h plus 3 x h square plus h cube so from here we can factorize the common uh, the common factor, so it should be h. Lah. So 3x squared 
plus 3xh plus h, h square over h. So this we can simplify, then we can direct substitute into our limit. So 3x square plus 3x times 0 plus 0 square. So from here, we could get 3x square, which is e. That is our answer. All right? So for this question, you have to know how to expand. I think for your syllabus, right? I think you you have to know how to expand up until power of three for binomial, for binomial. Uh, I think to the power of four, so far I haven't found any. Unless you are a degree student, then you have to expect it. Uh, but for college students like you guys, I don't think that they will ask until to the power of four for the binomial. So, so don't, no need to worry. Lah. Okay, so any questions so far? If there is no questions, then we could move on to the next question. Ah, yeah. Untuk soalan ni, kan guna first principle kan? Ah. Uh -huh. Lepas tu, binomial pun boleh guna eh? Ah, kita nak kembangkan binomial tu. X plus H tu lah binomial. Dan kita guna binomial theorem sebab dia kuasa tiga. So kita nak kembangkan. Sebab kalau lah kita direct substitute, then kita akan dapat interdominant form. Okay, which is zero divided by zero. So how do we do that? By expanding it first, and then we simplify. And then we factorize the common factor, which is H. And then from there, we can simplify again. Then from there, we then can direct our, we can direct sub our zero into the limit. Then we could get the, Final answer, which is three x squared. Okay, so honestly, right, there are a few chapters where you have to remember that, which is binomial, obviously, because if you continue on study chemistry, physics in, in university, I think from um, there are a few situations where you have to expand higher powers of binomial to the power four, to the power five then you will often use binomial theorem, okay? Hopefully, there are no questions, but if there is any questions, you could ask now or later maybe. But if there is no questions, then we could move on. Maksudnya, guna, kena, guna, kena buat binomial dulu, baru first principle. Ah, yes, yes. Sebab kalau kita direct sub... Tak kembang macam tu, so. Oh, nak? Oh, uh, I think, right. If you know how to combine directly, like I did right here, then no problem. Lah. But if you forget about it, then you could use binomial theorem. Kalau lupa boleh guna binomial theorem lah, untuk kembangkan. Oh. Ah. Okay, okay. But tapi kalau Arina ingat lagi, bagaimana nak kembang, formula dia. Dia ada formula dia tau nak kembangkan. Cuma hafal tu lah, itu penat sikit. <laughs> Sebab panjang eh. So tapi kalau, kalau betul-betul faham, kaedah perkembangan menggunakan binomial theorem dan tak apa hafal memang just guna binomial theorem saja uh, so dia kurangkan beban lah dan kurangkan dan menambahkan lagi ruang untuk kita punya hafalan lain okey uh. so untuk HI dengan Huzaifa kau orang buat berdua ada masalah ke setakat ni harap ni faham eh apa so far sekarang okey lagi faham okey lagi eh Okay, all right, nice. So, <coughs> ah, here we go. Soalan bab sembilan, okay. So, Aina untuk bab lapan, ada, okay, of course lah, bab lapan, ada lagi masalah untuk graph, betul? Kan, nak graph lagi, saya rasa bab lapan. Eh, bab lapan lah, betul lah. Asymptote, horizontal, vertical. But, later on nanti saya akan, Isnin kau orang cuti kan Isnin, betul? Yeah, yeah, okay, nice. So, saya rasa Isnin Sekejap eh, pagi saya dah kandil bekerja ya, petang Petang free tak? Ke ada apa-apa event? Kokok kita free. boleh buat free eh? Okay, okay. nanti free. saya akan go through the link Link Ah, uh, free, yes, yeah. Boleh, ya, boleh, 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 boleh Nanti HR add dia tau dalam group Supaya dia boleh update lah Okay, boleh, boleh, boleh Okay Alright, 
So inshallah, I will go through the link because before this, I did share a link for past year Pespian papers or current year, whatever. And I will try to find questions where in, it, it involves on graphing by using asymptotes. Uh, so I will try to find more. Okay. In the meantime, let's continue on for this question. So this is chapter nine. Okay. So chapter nine, which what's the topic? Uh, differentiation. Okay, <laughs> differentiation. All right. So I think you guys already learned about chain rule, quotient rule, product rules, and then there there is a new part which is implicit differentiation. Okay. Then we will get to that part later on. Uh, for implicit. And then as 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 far as I know, you guys already learned about differentiation of exponential, logarithmic, and trig functions. Hopefully. You guys remember, eh? but as far as I know, um, PSPM for maths, right? Um, uh, they already gave you the formula for it, so I'm not worried uh, if you guys don't remember, you could just refer back to the formula. But it will be more efficient if you guys remember the formula, okay? So, given here, we have a function, okay, binomial, okay, this is, this is binomial, okay. The way we pronounce it, so d d d x. Okay, by the way, since uh, it is binomial because it, it has two terms. Okay, since it has two terms, then it is binomial. Wait, is it binomial? All right, I'm not sure. Sorry if I'm wrong. Okay, but you okay, just forget about it, what I said. All right, so right now we will be using chain rule. Okay. So first, how do we differentiate this function? Or this whatever uh, I think it's a function, it's not a function, whatever. Okay, but how do we differentiate it? All right, first by using chain rule, we differentiate this part here, where we bring the power to the front, and then we minus one, as usual. So we will get three bracket e to the power of x plus 2x, 3 minus 1. Is that it? No. We have to differentiate the terms inside the bracket. So by writing here, d dx, e to the power of x plus 2x. Okay? So remember, for e to the power of x, if we differentiate it, you will get the same value lah, as before. But you have to be careful because sometimes we have questions, for example, e to the power of 2x. So how do we differentiate it? <laughs> uh, as far as I know, um, wait, let me see the rules again. I forgot the rules a bit, sorry. Um, should be, uh, where are the rules? Ah, here we go. So for e to the power of x, the coefficient here will go in front, then you'll get 2e to the power of 2x. If you want to prove it, then I think you have a way to prove it. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, wait, e to the power of 2x. e to the power of 2x. I think if you want to prove it, you use chain rule again, but later on. But for now, if you want to differentiate, the coefficient in front here will go up front. Okay, as for now. Later on, I will discuss about why it happens, but if you're interested. But as for now, you know that, okay, if the coefficient is 2 or 3, then it will go up front. But why e to the power of x? Is still e to the power of x because the coefficient is one. So since the coefficient is still one, then one times e to the power of x is still e to the power of x. Then from there, there's nothing to consider. Okay. So hopefully you guys understood that part. So let me continue on. All right. So from here, we differentiate it as usual. Then you will get three e to the power of x plus 2x to the power of 2, e to the power of x plus 2. Can you factorize it? No. Can you do anything about it? Simplify it? No. Then you just leave it be as this form. 
so let's see the multiple choice question here and then the answer should be ayam which is a okay so what are the main key points for this question first you have to know the chain ruler how to apply it wait i think did you guys learn chain rule wait i'm worried that you guys didn't learn ch ah yes chain rule okay you, you guys learn chain rule all right so if you want to differentiate this you have to use chain rule unless you can expand it by using binomial theorem then by all means go ahead but it is a lot of work all right and then at the end you have to factorize everything so it's going to be very difficult but from here you could use chain rule it's really easy okay but as long as you know a few rules differentiating exponential functions for example e to the power of x okay as long as you know how to do it and the basics which is 2x to differentiate 2x it becomes 2 all right hopefully you guys have no issues about this question but unless you do let me know okay so can we move on and you proceed to the next question. If, if there is no problem, then I can proceed. Lah. If I can, all right. Hopefully, you guys can keep up with the pace. Ah, here we go. Implicit. All right. <laughs> okay. Honestly, right? Um, honestly, they should mention that A is constant. A is constant. All right they should mention a constant because sometimes right students also consider a as a variable so they'll be like oh we have to <laughs> use differentiate rules or something like that but this question should mention that a is constant then students know oh when i differentiate a constant that it becomes zero all right so from here, let's use implicit differentiation. So wait, let me go back. Okay. <clears throat> so square root of x plus square root of y is equal to square root of a. So obviously a constant will be zero. But a square of x, when we differentiate to, uh, in respect of x, it will be one over two to the power two square root of x. Okay. How about, wait, I forgot to write down this part here. Yeah, this is important to show that you are about to differentiate both sides. DDX, right? So from here, we could differentiate it become one over two square of X. But how about square of Y? For square of Y, you differentiate as usual. Okay, as far as I know, you should differentiate as usual, but you have to add with dy dx up front, dy dx, okay? So, wait, yeah, dy dx, so from here, zero, okay? So from here, you make sure that you are making this function in terms of x, y, because the question was asked dy dx, right? So, 1 over 2 square of y dy over dx is equal to negative 1 over 2 square of x and then multiply both sides with 2 square of y then you will get dy over dx it should be negative square of y over square root of x so the answer should be oh by the way one of the um some definition it's a law i think yeah the law for square root right if you have square root of a over square root of b then you can combine it to become square root of a over b therefore it will become negative square root of y over x so the answer should be a okay so honestly right for implicit differentiation you do di you differentiate as usual okay you differentiate as usual but if you're differentiating something which is not the variable for this question where we differentiate in respect of x which is the dx ah, but we are facing a variable which is square of y then we differentiate as usual but we 
also include dy dx. Okay. I don't know how to explain it why we do it. But the method is that you put dy dx for variables that doesn't have anything to do with the dx. If you put like, for example, right, if you put ddy, okay, if I you put ddy, then obviously you don't need dy dx, but you do need dx over dy. Uh, that's the difference. Okay, so make sure you really check the you you check the questions. Um, you check when, what 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 does the question wants. For this question, it wants us to find dy dx. Therefore, we differentiate in respect of x ddx. But unless the question right. It wants dx over dy. Then we'd have to differentiate in respect of y. Then we have to do, we don't need dy dx, but we need dx dy for our variable x. All right, so it switches roles lah, if you change from dy dx to dx dy. Okay, that was a bit. That was a lot to explain, but hopefully, I think you have a question, okay? Anyone have a question, Arena? HI? Any questions for this part here? Hopefully you guys have a, hopefully you guys are good. <laughs> um, but how do I explain it? But nonetheless, this is the way. How you diff oh, yeah, sorry, you pull up the dx. So this is a way if you want to compute for dy dx. Okay, you have to differentiate both sides in respect of x. Can I get the slides later? Oh yeah, sure. Um, uh, after I try add you into the group, then I'll share the PDF. Okay. All right. So about to be eleven. So how many questions do we have left? We have three. Hmm. Unfortunately, right. <laughs> It's already 11 and I have to go sleep for tomorrow. So, uh, tomorrow's, um, I have a lot of work to do for tomorrow. But um, I'll share this PDF later for the rest of the questions. Okay, I'll be sharing it. For Monday, on Monday, I'll be focusing on more chapter eight. Okay, that will be my main priority. Where? Well, let me just. Differentiating, shuffle, but where's very serious with that multiplying? Okay. All right. So on Monday, we'll be discussing on chapter eight. Let me stop recording now.